I miss him as an elder brother. South Africans haven't forgotten. Ceremonies of remembrance across the country a testament to that. In Pretoria, Nelson Mandela's nearest and dearest gathered, the deputy president reminding his audience that the journey continues. We must build the kind of society to which Nelson Mandela dedicated his life. He was our teacher and our mentor. He never gave up on the struggle to free us and unite us into one nation. Nelson Mandela's death exactly a year ago was met with an extraordinary wave of national emotion. But there was optimism too about how far the country had come, about the foundations that had underpinned that progress and could continue to do so. The electorate seemed to accept that. Five months later, the African National Congress won its fifth consecutive general election convincingly. What the ballot didn't reveal was whether that result was because or in spite of its president. Since then, Jacob Zuma has been relentlessly targeted. The scandal over multi-million dollar upgrades to his private home is old news, but it won't go away particularly perhaps at a time when one of the least equal countries in the world has a stagnating economy. Its longest ever strike this year played a part in that, once again exposing structural issues that remain unresolved. And the ANC's solution has caused ruptures within party ranks. The ruling alliance is nearing breaking point. Unions representing particularly lower income workers accuse the party of betraying the principles that Mandela and his colleagues fought for. All of this has veteran journalist Alistair Sparks daring to claim that the country is nearing a precipice. I, I'm deeply worried by the uh, um, fading of his legacy, of what he meant, because he had a grand vision for South Africa. What one sees is that the middle class is growing, the working class is shrinking, and the underclass is growing, because a lot of young people are being left behind with a very inadequate and poor education system. Now, throughout that long period of Nelson Mandela's high-profile ill health, there was this constant reminder of the principles he stood for. So, in the year since, the sudden absence of that kind of narrative makes it tempting to wonder whether even the old man may be looking down now with some despair. But while a year may be a short time in politics, it is of course just a footnote in history. It may be just too early to tell whether the seemingly constant trickle of scandal and intrigue coming out of South Africa is a sign of a legacy unravelling or simply a blip. Guy Henderson, CCTV, Pretoria.